Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this episode, we're going to talk about how do we prepare our hosts for NSX. This is going to be a two-parter, okay? I'm trying to keep these things not too, too long. Uh, in this episode, we, we're going to talk about the terminologies, things you need to know before you start preparing your hosts. So we'll see you right back. Stick around. Hi everyone, thanks for sticking around. So let's get to it. Let's talk about what you need to know before you start preparing your host. There's no demo in this one. This is just part one of two parts. The second part, I'll show you how to do it, okay? So first thing, what do we need to know? For mostly what you need to know here is what an overlay network is. And the reason for that is when we're preparing our host, one of the things you may be challenged to do is set up these things called a VTAP or a TAP. What are those? That's what we're gonna talk about. We will also need to know what a transport zone is because you're, when you prepare your host, you're going to need to well, prepare your transport zones and assign your host to that. So what are they? What do we need them for? And last but not least, one of the important things here is when we talk about NIC teaming, you want some kind of redundancy. So we'll talk about uplink profiles as well. Well, we'll focus mainly on the different NIC teaming uh, solutions that we actually have are redundant solutions as well okay and then like I said in part two we'll show you all this stuff okay but you need to understand this first so let's talk about an overlay network what it is now I've got a little PowerPoint presentation here that I, I actually show a, a couple of things here so first of all we'll see that we actually have four ESXi hosts okay in my environment I could have more but in this example I'm just showing four I have my vCenter server here that's the white box the big white box in there, I've got a vSphere distributed switch. I just called it VDS01. I've got various virtual machines at the top here. Uh, virtual machine one would be running on host one. Virtual machine two would be running on host two, three on host three, and, and four on host four for the most part, okay? I've got some physical switches down here. These are just layer two. Whenever I say switch, I'm just talking layer two, no layer three. So I just got some physical switches here. And my hosts, my E6i hosts, have physical cards. I'm only showing one card here just to keep things simple. Okay, you may have two, ten, whatever. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna show management networks or anything like that because it doesn't really apply here, doesn't really matter. Okay, so I've got some physical NICs, I got one inside each host. Okay, so let me clear this up. Actually, let me get a black marker. So my distributed switch will actually have uplinks on it. Okay. So when you create your distributed switch, you'll have uplinks. Um, you'll then assign your physical NIC to those uplinks. Here we go. This might be a typical vSphere environment. Those physical NICs will be hooked up to a physical switch. Let me put a link between these switches. Okay, so it's just one layer two network down there below. And these VMs, let me change my colors, so I'll go blue. I might create a port group on here. This is a port group, port group, port group. And those VMs, their virtual NICs attach that port group. This might be a typical vSphere environment, okay? So again, if VM1 wants to talk to VM3 or whatever, yeah, no problems, it can do it. The reason why I'm drawing this like this is there's one thing I want to point out down here so this works in a, in a typical vSphere environment. Now, I'm gonna change this diagram just a little bit and I want to get that eraser. Let me go there. Let's get rid of that link between the switches. Let's throw a router between them. This is now a layer three device, okay? So one of the questions I usually ask in my class, my students is, can VM1 over here on the far left now talk to VM4? And I get a lot of people kind of hesitating on this, okay, which is which is normal, right? So I say, okay, let's walk through it. So let's say VM1's never talked to VM4, all right? It knows, let's say we're going to do a ping. So VM1's going to ping VM4's IP, whatever. All these are on the same subnet, okay? Let's say this is the 172.16.10 uh, network, okay? They're all on the same subnet. Maybe this guy over here, this VM1 is .10, VM2 is .20. VM3 is dot 30, VM4 is dot 40. And let's say it's a slash 24 mass, just to, for clarity there, okay? So if VM1 wants to talk to VM4, so it's gonna ping 
40. It knows the source IP itself. It knows that. It knows it's the destination IP because I'm typing in ping. All right. So there's my layer three stuff. Now, the layer two stuff, it knows its source MAC address, right? It doesn't know VM's four um, MAC address. So it's got to figure that out. Let's say it doesn't find it in its cache or any of that stuff because they've never talked before, right? So what it's got to do, it's got to basically do, let's uh, get a, a big thing here. It's got to do an ARP, ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, right? So basically it's going to do a broadcast. It's going to scream out, who's got this IP? And that's a broadcast, right? So the switch will receive it. The switch does with broadcast. It floods it out all ports on the same VLAN, except for the port it came in on. So it's gonna flood it out here. It's gonna flood it out to the router. What does the router do? It's sort of like Lord of the Rings. Boom, you shall not pass. Doesn't let the broadcast go through. So that ARP traffic does not go across the switch. It does not hit that VM4. This is the reason why they can't talk to each other. So in a typical vSphere environment, whether you've got a standard switch or a distributed switch, I don't care which one, physically down at the bottom here, the hosts have to be connected on the same layer two network, okay? Again, natively, all right? Um, so how can we get how can we get around that? Actually, before I, I, I even say that, if VM1 wanted to talk to VM2, notice they're in the same broadcast domain, they'd be able to do that, okay? Because the ARP would travel to VM2. So again, we just cannot go through this router here. Now, some of you might say, well, why doesn't it send it to its default gateway? Remember, these VMs are all in the same uh, all in the same network, 172.16.10 network, and your IP stack in VM1 says, oh, we're on the same subnet. I don't need to send it to my default gateway. So I usually get that comment sometimes in a classroom. VM1 knows, oh, uh, it's on the same subnet. I'm going to build the layer three information. I'm not going to fire it off to my router, okay? So how do we get around this? And this is where overlay network comes into play from a VMware perspective. Let me just clean this up real fast. Let's just redraw those back in really quick. I'll slap the router in here. Slap the router. So we have our uplinks, do, 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 just like before. So now what I'm going to do is create, again, I'll use, maybe I'll use green here. I'm going to create an NSX segment. I'll say NSX segment. I got horrible handwriting. Let's connect my, the NIC, let's connect the NIC of the VMs to that NSX segment. Now I'm going to demo all that. So the NSX segment now, so there's, so it's very, it, the NSX segment is almost like, a, it's basically like a port group. If you're familiar with vSphere, it's basically like a port group, but it's special, okay? It actually uses um, Geneve as its encapsulation, Geneve. And I'll talk about that in a second. Now, down here at the bottom where our NICs are, we call these things VTAPs, virtual tunnel endpoints, or you can call them TAPs. You know, they can be called TAPs if you want to, tomato, tomato. Tunnel endpoint, virtual tunnel endpoint, I don't care whichever one you, you want. The TAPS job or the VTAPS job is to take your layer two frame, right, and encapsulate it inside Geneve. Okay? So now what's gonna happen here, let's uh let's send this out. Let's say VM1 fires out some information, it's going to VM4. The TAP receives it. It says, okay, I'm gonna take that layer two frame, I'm gonna put it inside my Geneve frame. And so it's going to encapsulate. Let's change the color. Let's go with this. It's going to encapsulate, and it's going to fire it across the network. Notice it's going through the router now. Now, the tap at the other end, that's the destination tap. Its job is to decapsulate. So taps encapsulate and decapsulate. So it's going to look at the Geneve header and say, yep, that's me. And we'll look at the Geneve header when I get into switching later on and stuff, right? Uh, but for now, just understand, this is just some basic overview because we need to understand what a tap is. So the tap's going to encapsulate or decapsulate. So the tap on the far right is the destination, receives it, looks at the Geneve header, says, yep, that's for me, all right, takes the original layer two frame, decapsulates. In other words, takes the Geneve header, throws it in the garbage, and gets the original frame and sends it up to VM4. Okay, so these two VMs over here at the top are completely unaware of any of this encapsulation going on. As far as they're concerned, they're on the same network. So it's all on the same subnet, 172.16.10 network. So what did we achieve here? We just virtualized networking. We basically created a layer two network, a layer two network 
on top of a layer three network. So physically down below at the bottom here, I don't care what you got there. If you got a shoe can, sorry, you got a can with string that's running IP, that's all I care about, right? So we've essentially decoupled our networking from our physical network, okay? So we can now build layer two networks on top of layer three. What's the advantage of that? Let's say you've got racks and racks of servers and you're doing some kind of leaf spine topology. So each rack is its own layer two network, right? And now you want to create a port group across that. Well, you can't do it natively with vSphere. With NSX, we don't care. So I can actually create that layer two network across all those racks that are in different layer three networks and the VMs don't care, all right? So that's really cool. Now, there is one thing I do care about. And let me just, uh, let me just uh, change my color here. I'll go red. One of the things is the MTU, maximum transmission unit size, down here in the physical network. In the physical network, I need, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say this, uh, um, I need 1700 bytes minimum. This is the VMware recommendation, 1700 bytes, okay, for Geneve. Technically, you can get away with 1600, it would work, okay? But um, you need that at least. So I'll say a minimum of 1600. If you're ever writing an exam um, for for NSX um, uh, version, yeah, NSX version three, whatever, VMware, because that's when they changed that. The VMware wants you to, uh, to do a 1700 MTU at a minimum. If you're doing 9,000 bytes, let's say you, you know you're doing whatever 9,000 bytes rocking and rolling no problems right just make sure your vms if you're if you're going to use jumbo frames for vm to vm communication make sure you have that 200 byte over um, buffer let's say so if you got 9,000 down on the physical here 9,000 bytes down here and you're going to use jumbo frames between vms make sure it doesn't go any higher than 8800 so you have that extra so that's the thing that we really care about is the mtu size so what do we learn here just a really really basic thing on overlay and the other thing that's important here is what the TEP is or the VTAP. Does encapsulation and decapsulation. You need a very basic understanding of that because when we prepare our host, we need to configure those. Okay. Uh, what is a transport zone? So first of all, this is something we got to create when we're making our preparing our host. So there's two types of transport zones. There's the overlay transport zone and a VLAN. The overlay, so that sounds familiar. Let's back up a second. So when I look at my picture here, this NSX segment is the overlay, overlay. And the bottom down here is the underlay. So this, now how in my picture does it know when I create this NSX segment, how does it know it's got a span host one, two, three, and four? Well, that's what the transport zone is. So I create this transport zone. That's all I do. I specify it's an overlay, let's say. And then when I'm preparing my host, one of the things I'm gonna do is say, this host is part of this. Sorry about that. This host is part of this, um, um, let me do that. This host part of this transport zone. So now when I create my segment, which I'll demo uh, later on in the next part two, when I create my segment, I say, what overlay you are, are you part of? And then I pick my transport zone and it knows, oh, this segment has to span all these hosts. So that's what a transport, an overlay transport zone does for us. It tells me the span of the segment when I create it, what hosts are gonna participate with that segment. That's an overlay. Now what's a VLAN transport zone? Um, a VLAN transport zone, the idea here, I'm gonna talk more about this when we get into our routing, okay? Uh, but a VLAN transport zone allows us to connect to the real world. So if you're playing with overlay networks, that's a virtual network, well, we somehow need to get to the real world. We'll go through gateways. So I may have a gateway that's connecting my virtual environment and my physical environment. Uh, this gateway would have to have connections in the overlay transport zone and in the VLAN. So a VLAN uh, transport zone is really a connection kind of into the physical. I'll show you that when we get into our gateways and routings, but we're far away from that for now, okay? So but we'll be creating our transport zones. The other thing you need to know is what uplink profiles are. So NIC teaming options. What do we have for, for that? Now, let's go back to my picture here, my really ugly crude picture here. My taps, my VTAPs, right? 
obviously you want some kind of redundancy there. Now I'm only showing you one neck, but you're probably gonna want redundancy. You'll probably have at least two. So what kind of teaming policies can we do with that? That's what this um, uh, uplink profiles, uh, one of the things it covers, right? So let's go through some terminologies here. This is something I uh, put together from a VMworld presentation many, 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 many moons ago, right? Uh, again, this slide is showing you NSX virtual distributed switches and vSphere distributed switches. I'm keeping, uh, I'll talk about what's changed in 4.x, but for now, let's just go through with the slides, right? So first of all, let's talk about what uplinks, physical NICs, and what a lag is. So physical NICs are physical ports on the host. So physical NIC is a network card, the ports on your network card. That's your physical NIC, all right? Physical NICs can be bundled to form a lag, link aggregation, okay? So LACP. So we can do that if you want to, that's up to you. Uplinks are logical interfaces of the NSX virtual distributed switch or the vSphere distributed switch, just for completeness there, right? So these uplinks is basically what NSX sees, okay? Uplinks are assigned physical NICs or lags. So you connect an uplink to a NIC or lag. So when we look at my picture here, again, this is not a design class, folks, or anything like that. This is just explaining terminologies. You'll see here, here's an NSX, or we can even say vSphere distributed switch. It has an uplink, and this uplink can be actually connected to a lag, or it can actually be connected to physical NICs. Now, this is not a design recommendation. This is just um, showing you terminologies. Any combination is possible with ESXi. KVM does have some limitations. And as I mentioned before, KVM support's been dropped in 4.x, okay? Just to keep things clear. So you, st you folks still running 3.x out there, you could still have KVM hosts, right? So in this picture, what do I see? I have a, a NSX or a vSphere distributed switch that has four uplinks, and I'm connecting these uplinks to physical NICs. That's you know, over here. Another possible solution would be, again, here's my NSX or vSphere distributed switch with an uplink that's connecting to a lag. I'm using link aggregation, LACP if I wanted to, uh, create a lag with these physical NICs. And these NICs I'll be hooked up to like physical switches, let's say. And then down over here, you can do something like this. Again, have an NSX or vSphere distributed switch with one uplink connecting to a lag. And this lag is comprised of four network cards. So you've got lots of, lots of flexibility here. Again, as I mentioned before, KVM can only have one lag defined, okay? So let's look at some configurations here. So when we talk about teaming policies, so teaming policies basically talk about uh, how we're gonna provide redundancy. So you'll notice you have three choices here, failover, order, source port, or source Mac. So this one here is my failover order. This is talking about the taps, okay? So when we're creating our taps, we want some kind of redundancy. This one here is the simplest, failover order. Basically you have a primary, here I got two uplinks. Each uplink is going to a physical NIC, okay? And this would be the active one on the, on the right, oh, sorry, on the left. This is the standby one on the right. So all my VM's traffic is going through this NIC. So therefore I have a single tap. So your tap has an IP. So that tap is, is basically on that active. Now, if something should happen, this one here fails, that NIC fails, then the standby will now become active and uh, everything would fail over to there. So very simple setup. Uh, doesn't have any special switch requirements you could just have a layer two switch there, boom, it's fine. It's, you know, you don't need to set up LACP or anything. So very, very simple setup. And there's nothing wrong with that. The downside is you're only using one NIC, okay? Now, on your ESXi hosts, we do have a, a choice of either source port or source MAC as our failover. And I'll show you how to do all this stuff when we get to the demo in part two, all right? So if you're a vSphere person that's already familiar with networking, uh, redundancy in vSphere, this is gonna sound really familiar, source port or source Mac. So in this example, we've got, again, our same configuration. We have two uplinks and each uplink goes to a physical NIC. Now, let's say I decided, I don't care which one, if I'm doing source port or source Mac, but let's say source port, just for argument's sake, I'm doing source port. This VM, VM1, is hooked up to a port on this vSphere distributed switch. So whatever port it's hooked up to, it will be mapped to uplink one. 
So that means that VM would go to uplink one all the time. Again, when I look at VM2 over here, it's got a connection into a port on that distributed switch. And whatever it's connected to would be mapped to an uplink. Now, in this example, they're showing us uplink 2. It could be mapped to uplink 1, but it's mapped to uplink 2 in this example. So we see that VM1's always going to use uplink 1. VM2 is always going to use uplink 2. So both NICs are being used. That sounds really good, right? It's not really load balancing. It's just distributing the load. Okay. Now, um, in this example, since we're utilizing both NICs, we're going to have multi, uh, I'll say multi VTAPs. That means in a failover order, since one NIC's being used, you only have one VTAP IP. One VTAP IP. In this example on the right, since we got two uplinks, we're going to have two VTAP IPs. One for each uplink. Okay? Uh, if I had four uplinks here, I'd have four VTAP IPs. So you're burning through more IPs with this solution on the right. If something should happen, let's say again, uplink one dies, again what will happen is the VM would, uh, the tap would fail over to uplink two and now VM one would be utilizing uplink two. So the tap that VM one was mapped to, we don't remap it to a new tap because that means we'd have to update a whole bunch of tables and that would just create a whole bunch of extra overhead. So they say we're failing the tap over. So the first tap was running on, let's say, I'll call this tap one and this is tap two. So we're gonna fail the tap over. So tap one will now be over here and the VM would follow that, okay? So we don't have to change taps. And we'll look at the tables and all that stuff in a, in a future video when I get into switching and stuff like that. So, um, so that's great. Again, uh, again, source port is based on the port the VM is plugged into. Uh, source MAC if, uh, is based on the MAC address. So it's almost the same thing when you think about it. But if the VM had multiple MACs, if it had a NIC with multiple MACs, potentially it could use multiple taps. All right. So this one on the right sounds pretty, pretty, pretty good, right? Uh, it does add a bit of complexity to troubleshooting. I'll talk about troubleshooting much, much later on. Um, but it's not impossible. Okay, um, so this one's nice and simple on the left. This one here is simple to set up, but it does add a layer of complexity from a troubleshooting perspective. Now here they show you um, lags. I could do the same kind of thing with lags if I wanted to. Uh, I think these diagrams are a uh, little on the silly side. I would probably just create a single lag and have multiple NICs on that. But again, they're just showing you you could do this. So here's failover order. So again, we have uh, uplink one going to a lag. This lag has two NICs. Uplink two is going to another lag with two NICs. And I'm using LACP over here. So that means these two NICs, NICs 1 and 2, are in a LACP group. Uh, this switch has to be set up for LACP as well. Same thing with this one. And you have to support LACP between those. So this is something that requires your network folks to set up. Here's a, Again, we could do the same kind of thing over here if we wanted to using source port based on legs. I think these, this drawing is a little overkill. I would probably do something just as simple as is this one um, this one here maybe right you have one lag two nicks away you go but again you have this flexibility you have this options if you if you want to um, I, again it, it really depends on you um, I, I've, I've taught classes with network engineers in the room and I taught classes without network engineers in a room uh, you should get which one's best um, which one does VMware recommend um, generally speaking, VMware kind of shies away uh, away from the LACP. Why? It's not that it's bad. Okay, I just want to make sure I get that crystal clear. It's not that it's bad. It's that not all switches support it, and different vendors have different techniques. Okay, can I do LA? Can I do LACP across two switches? Well, that depends on the switch. So, um, so VMware, from a support perspective, doesn't handle that. So if you are comfortable, your team is comfortable with LACP, you eat and, eat and sleep LACP every day, great, no problems, as long as you're comfortable with that. But if you're not, the other solutions are very simple to set up, okay? So I'll leave it up to you which one you want, okay? And how do we do that? We do this thing with uplink profiles, which I'll, 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 I'll demo. I, again, uplink profiles, we can create multiple uplink profiles for different environments. So maybe this ESX server is going to use, um, 
yeah, sorry, I'm going to make an uplink profile called common, and it's just going to be failover order, right? Uh, so my active uplink will be uplink one, active uh, standby will be uplink two. So I don't care what type of transport node, whether it's ES6I or KVM from pre 4.0. Okay, remember, we don't support KVM anymore. Um, they'll all use that type of methodology. Or you could do something like this. I could create specific uplink profiles for a set of hosts. Maybe this set of hosts will do um, a source port. So I'm, I'm going to have, in this example, I'll have two tap IPs, two tap IPs, right? Uh, but in this environment, maybe this KVM host, well, KVM doesn't support multi-tap, so this will be active standby profile. This doesn't have to be KVM. It could be another set of ESXi hosts that you decide that you're going to do a different profile, different failover. Maybe you use LACP over here and, and just source port over here uh, for whatever reasons. Bottom line is you have that flexibility. I would probably try to keep things, just from a troubleshooting perspective, uh, similar or the same. It just makes life a little bit easier. The first NIC is active, second is standby, or whatever the case may be. If you keep it consistent, then when it comes down to troubleshooting, it makes things a little bit easier as opposed to if everything's completely different and stuff. Uh, we'll take a look at teaming profiles uh, or uplink profiles when I get into the demo in part two. That's it. So I'm going to put the demo here or here, whichever one, okay? So that will be part two. You want to click on that. You want to watch it. Thanks for sticking around. Again, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, okay? It helps me build content. Also, you know, if you found this entertaining or a little bit useful, hit that like button. Hit the uh, notification button as well, and you'll get notified when I put out more videos. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. See you in the next video.